Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today is another Sew Along Sunday. We are at our final part four of our B6358 swimsuit. Um, today we are um, attaching the lining and the outer body together. Um, or have we already done that? Oh, I'm getting all confused with my tutorials. We're de definitely doing our elastics today. <laughs> I sewed this up quite a while ago, um, just uh, doing the intros, uh, but we are doing the elastics today and I'm showing you my trick for inserting a um, ready to wear old bra into the suit. Uh, so I will be showing you how to do that as well. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut to the tutorial now, but wait till the end. I'm going to come back and do a little bit of kind of a pattern review here at the end, as well as show you the finished um, garment on me. So stay tuned till that and uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those as quickly as possible. Also, if this is a type of video that you enjoy and um, really like the hand holding with the swimsuit um, sew along, I do have a coffee account and there's a link down below where you can just buy me a coffee, um, which is basically like a virtual tip jar. Um, so I do have that available as well just to help support the channel. All of it goes back right back into the channel. All right, that's all I have for now. I will again come back at the end. I hope you enjoy this. All right, time to do elastic. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at what we've got. So here is the front of our suit. Here's our ties that will eventually get tied in the front. All right, so we have these areas here that we have basted and or surged that go all the way to the back strap. So we're gonna get elastic that's gonna be inserted there. Then elastic that's gonna go around the back of the strap and all the way around the back to the other side of the strap. The second side, which I've already inserted the elastic and finished it off. So that's what it, we're going for. That's what it's gonna look like when all is said and done. And then our um, leg holes. So I've got one hole there and I've finished one hole there. Okay, so you need to grab your elastic and I realize the elastic guides do have notches or things that you can mark. Um, I prefer just to quarter it myself. So I went ahead and wrote in Sharpie what my pieces are. So this is the back piece that um, goes along the back part of the uh, swimsuit where, you know, the um, the kind of the open cutout piece, this section right here. <laughs> so I have already quartered this and I did that by taking each strap, folding it to center back and then pulling it straight and then sticking a pin where that quartered. And I did that on both sides. Now I'm gonna do the same with the elastic. So we'll have the back elastic. Let's talk about the elastic first. We'll have two, uh, one back elastic. We will have two upper elastics. I wrote up on this, and that is um, the part that goes kind of under the arm um, to the top of the cup, cup. There'll be two of these, I've already put one in. And then two leg elastics. Now for the leg elastic, I've already gone ahead and sewn it into, a, a, uh, into the round. And I just overlapped about a half of an inch. And then I just did that um, stretch stitch just to tack them down because these are going to get zigzagged in twice. Once when it gets attached to the wrong side and then you'll flip it over and top stitch it again. So this doesn't have to be super secure, just secure enough that it keeps it in the round. So I've just done a stretch stitch and I did that on both. So you'll have two of these. So now for this upper piece, I found that I really just need the halfway point. So I'm gonna fold it in half. And instead of using a pen because of this rubber elastic, actually just going to take one of these Brixon pins because it'll go away. And I'm just marking that fold. Then for the back, we're gonna mark the center. This is a long piece. We'll mark that center. And then I'm just gonna take each cut end to that center point. Oh wait, I want it to go the other way so I can 
want all my marks on the same side of the elastic here. Mark that. And then with the other side, mark that. Obviously there'll be one of the back, two of the top ones. Now for the legs, there'll be two of these two. So now I'm just going to fold it. Here's the part that I sewed. So just gonna fold it till it's taut. I'm gonna mark that. Then I'm gonna match that part that I just sewed to So I'm matching the mark I just made to the center of that part that I sewed and pulling that taut this way, marking it, and then pulling it taut the other way. Now keep in mind when you're sewing your elastic into the round that you don't twist it. It's very easy to do. So you wanna make sure, you know, you're literally just overlapping the ends and sewing those down, so make sure you don't get that twisted. Okay, so now we have all of our remaining elastic um, quartered. So now we just do the same thing. Um, so I showed you how to quarter the back, the same with the leg. I take the crotch seam, which is right here, and I pulled it taut, put a pin in, and then I matched those, the crotch to that pin to come up with my pin there and my pin there. So now that everything's quartered, we can very easily sew all this elastic in. So let's go to the sewing machine. All right, so first we are going to put the elastic in. This is the part where we had clipped into the seam allowance and it's coming up. This is the top part of the swimsuit. And I've marked the halfway point right here with this pen. So we're gonna do this wrong side up or the lining side up. And I am going to lay my elastic. I'm gonna make sure I'm laying it up so that I can see my mark that's here when I get to it. So I've got my machine on a uh, three-step zigzag, and I've got it at a four width and a three length, which is my favorite for the three-step zigzag. And I really just want to line, sorry, <laughs> want to line the edge of that elastic to the end of that, kind of layered on top of my um, surging. I want it to be as close to the top of that surging as possible. And I'm gonna anchor it first. And then once we've anchored it, you can go ahead and if you want, pin it. Um, pin that mark to that pin, but I just hold it with my fingers. I find that easier. And then it's just a matter of going just a couple inches at a time and trying to keep that elastic right on or close to that surging. Oh. And I'm stretching the elastic, but not the swimsuit. I'm also trying to do this around a camera. Pull my pin out. And then the rest of this, I'm just gonna take right to the end. I stopped my elastic about mm, half of an inch from the end because this is gonna go through, um, once all is said and done, this goes through the back clasp and it's gonna get folded over that. And that's just a lot easier if you don't have a lot of bulk of the um, elastic in there. Okay, so once we've done that, we are literally just gonna go back to the beginning. I'm going to clip these, I'm going to find scissors. Clip my stray threads here. Okay. Literally had scissors sitting right there. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. 
Okay, so this is still facing up. Now we're just gonna fold it over itself, like so, and sew it again. You may have to help it over the um, seams where it gets a little bit bulky, but for the most part, threads. All right, so that front part is all done, right where it goes into the tie. Okay, now we're going to do, so we just finished up this, now we're going to start here and go all the way around the back. So here I've got my back elastic, I've got my marks facing up, Again, I'm gonna start about, oh, three eighths to a half of an inch away from the end, just to give myself a little less bulk there. Anchor it in first before you start pulling. I've done that before, it's super annoying. You get everything all situated and then you pull it out. And then again, I'm just stretching the elastic, making sure that it, you know, just a little bit at a time, so that elastic covers the surging, especially around these curves. pins as you go. I don't have a pen on this middle one. It's just going to go right to the middle. Then I go to the next mark. Once again, we're just going to go do that same pass again. So we'll just fold it in on itself like so. This little area it is curved so I'm I am pulling the elastic taut so that things lie flat 
because I want this uh, to cut my body properly when it's on. So just go a little at a time. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera with my with my boob, actually. <laughs> I have to help it over the bumps. Okay, so what happened there is my thread got kind of, um, oh, I don't know how you would phrase that, but basically um, abraded. So a, a lot of that friction going through the rubber can cause your thread to abrade, and that's what happened there. So a couple of the strands, you know, broke from the friction, and that's what happened. So now we just got to figure out where I stopped. I find that that happens sometimes when you're using the rubber elastic. at the other end. Oh, we're coming so close. Okay, so now we need to put in our leg elastic. So this is a little bit different just because it's you're sewing in around, but not much. So I like to start, um, we can start kind of wherever you want, pick one. I'm just gonna, I like to start in the crotch seam, even though putting the seam of your elastic probably isn't the wisest in your crotch. It just, this for some reason just makes sense to me. And I've never had an issue with it being uncomfortable. So we're just going with it. So I'm matching up where I have um, secured my elastic together. Again, I want to make sure that my marks are up to make them really easy to see. Okay, so it's the same principle, except this time we're sewing in the round. So I'm gonna tack that down, then I'm just pulling my mark to match my next pen. You know, trying not to, you know, going just a little bit at a time. You have a lot of curve with this leg. So you wanna try and not, um, so your elastic too straight in some areas, you want it to follow that surging pretty well. So just go a little at a time. in a second. <laughs> Got away from me. Okay, marking the next mark. Grab that pen. So you want to make sure that you're not accidentally twisting your elastic.
gonna trim my threads here where I started just to get those out of the way. And then just like with the other ones, once we've made our way around, <laughs> we just flip it and sew around again. Go slow over those seams, it might be bulky. And just like that, we have our leg hole finished. All nice and pretty. All right, so now we're gonna go over, make our straps, get the elastic in those, attach our straps, and then we just have to attach our um, uh, back piece here. Bloop. And then we have a swimsuit. Then we can try it on. Um, we will, okay, so let's go over and make the straps and then we're going to um, sew the straps into the back and then we will um, <clears throat> do a little try on to determine how short, how much we want uh, our straps to be shortened. Okay, let's go make these straps. Okay, so, hold on. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so here um, is our, this is what we're going for with our strap. Right sides together and I've sewn the elastic in with the seam. Um, but you sew the edge of this at three-eighths of an inch, so you need to be careful with the elastic that it doesn't get trimmed off as you're trimming off the seam allowance when you're sewing this. Now, alternatively, you could, and you could definitely do this on a sewing machine, do your stretch stitch, sew it, you know, um, turn the strap piece right sides together, stitch it down three-eighths of an inch all the way down with your stretch stitch. Then you could go back and zigzag stitch in your elastic into that seam if you want. I just, you know, I like to do it at once just because it's quicker. Also, I noticed that my elastic is shorter than my strap for some reason, even though I cut a 14 for both, so I don't know what's going on there. So I just cut off the excess of my strap because chances are I'm going to have to cut off some strap anyway just because I'm short through that area. All right, so that's what we're going for. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Got my shoulder elastic that I've written shoulder on. So I'm gonna fold these right sides together. Now the key to this is just going really slow. Raise my presser foot so I can kind of get things fed in. So I wanna ride, um, it's three eighths of an inch if I ride this along here and it my blade will cut off that extra eighth of an inch. Now I'm just going to slide this in. So I noticed if I try and keep the elastic in the middle of this, it seems to be okay, but just go slow. Get my foot pedal all. And just do a little at a time. There it goes. Mostly, oops, too much. <laughs> I don't want my elastic to get hit by that blade, is my biggest thing but I would like it caught at least partially in the stitching. And 
as you can see, this one's gonna be too short too. So what I did is I just cut it off right underneath the elastic because I do want the elastic to go the full length. Okay, once that's done, then it's just a matter of turning it right side out. And what I like, to, I'm gonna take you to the ironing board and show you how I like to do that. All right, I like to turn my loops with a good old fashioned safety pin. The nice thing with the um, swimwear fabric is that it's super slippery, so this is not nearly as painful to do these tubes. So I'm gonna take the safety pin and I'm gonna go in through here, poke it. So I went in through the fold, poke it there. And then I'm just going to stick it there. And then you just gotta use your fingernails to get it started. But usually, once you get it started, it goes pretty quick. You do wanna be careful putting too much tension on the um, safety pin because it it will open up on you if you're not careful. And there is nothing more frustrating than having your safety pin open up inside a tube and like poking through to the other side. Rubber elastic has some good pullback on it. trying to open up on me. <laughs> All right. And you take that off. Oh no. There we go. Just get that out of the equation as soon as possible. And there we go. Beautiful strap. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one off uh, camera and then we're going to attach them to the back of the bathing suit, try it on and then uh, fasten it onto the front. Okay, so I'm not crazy about the way they have you um, attach the straps in this suit because um, it leaves a raw edge on the inside and I just don't like that. So what I am going to do, so this is our back. There's our front, here is our back. These will eventually clasp, actually, Let's go ahead and sew in our clasps really quickly because that will make trying on this suit much easier. We'll do the straps last. So we have our straps sewn. We'll attach them in just a second. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Now, this could completely be different depending on what um, you're using. So what you wanna do Right side's facing up, so this the way this comes apart is you twist, and then it very easily comes apart <laughs> like that. And then it just slides back down, and then fits in like that. So that's how that goes together. Basically, all you're doing is you're going to thread one raw end, and then we're gonna come on the wrong side, and I'm just gonna do Z the triple zigzag down and back. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Thread that in front to back. The same thing on that side. So I'm gonna go do that really quick um, and then we can put in our straps. 
Okay, so now that is all sewn in. So now that can come apart like that <laughs> and be very easy. So you can see that I just did the zigzag to stitch those down. All right, now it's time for our straps. Now, there are markings on the um, pattern where uh, you're supposed to mark your straps, but basically you can kind of put them wherever you want here on the back. You know, it's kind of different for each body. I also want to make a point. See how this is flipping up like this? If you hit that with some steam, that will, will cinch up and that won't be a problem. So just, I haven't hit any of this with steam yet. Okay. So basically what we want this to look like is I'm going to pick a spot, oh, about here probably. This is where I want this to be sewn in. And it will look like this when it's finished, but I don't want the raw edge sewing, showing. So I'm going to actually sew it first like this with my raw edge actually a little below and um, just a little below that. And I'm going to zigzag that in and then I'm going to fold this up like so and zigzag over that. So let's go over to the machine and do that real quick. All right, so there's my raw edge. I want it in just a wee bit. So you can kind of eyeball the first one, and then I'll show you how we're going to do the second one. So I'm going to find my pedal. And then I'm going to back over it again. You know, sometimes this can cause a little bit of, uh, make it look a little messy on the right side, just because you're doing so much of the back and forth. But you know, it's where the straps go in. You don't want those breaking, so I... And perfectly fine to sacrifice that. All right, so now we have it like this. Now I'm going to fold it up, give myself a little bit of a and actually with these teeny tiny straps I find it's better to start in the middle so that it doesn't get all wonky. Actually I want to be up here more. So as you can see, there's definitely almost like a, um, like a bar tack looking thing going on here, but I'm absolutely fine with that. All right, so how do we determine to make this even on the other back side? It's very easy. Oh, you throw your strap on the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so here is the center. The center of the buckle is the center of our strap. I'm just going to match up side seam to side seam. And we will determine right there. So we want this other one to go right there. So just like the other one. I'm going to start just a wee bit below. that anchor my needle go back and forth a couple of times and then we will go flip it up like we did the other one. Same thing. Oh, 
Oh, that one got wonky. It's not the end of the world, but I hate when that does that. However, I'm also not going to unpick all those zigzag stitches. So, and you can't tell from the right side. <laughs> That's what I was trying to avoid though. Okay, so now we want to take these straps and we're just going to pin them. And we wanna pin them I think, let me see here. Oh, these are crisscross straps. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> okay, so here's the front, here's my tie. So you just wanna take and criss basically crisscross them. So this, well here, let me take you back over to the cutting or the ironing board. Okay, so here are my straps here. So we wanna take this strap and it's gonna go over here um, to about an inch away from your um, bust seam that's right there. And we're just pinning it. So we're trying to determine if we need to shorten them. So there's that one. You wanna make sure it's not twisted. And then this one will go. And this doesn't need to be perfect as far as placement right now, because we're really just testing to make sure it's pretty close to being the correct length. Okay. So once we have our crisscross criss -cross straps, we can unbuckle this and try it on and I'll meet you at the mirror. Okay, so here we go. I love you guys. This suit's actually really too big in the chest, kind of. Um, my boobs also pressed down and it would have helped if I'd had the bra cups, like on the, end, not the bra cups, the um, elastic actually, or I could prop it up. But I think I can solve a lot of issues just by hiking this up. So see, that's where the, um, strap at its normal length. And remember, I cut an 18 in the top. Um, I feel like I could have gotten away with a 14 probably. But, you know, it's not awful. I will definitely show you better pictures. But I'm going to now put you down and I'm going to pin it up much better and show you what a difference that it makes. So hold on. All right, so I've got them pinned up a lot. Like I've taken off probably four inches off that strap length and it's better. But I'm wondering, I'm going to go ahead and sew the straps in. Um, remember, this is the bad part of swimsuits is that you can't fit as you go and you can't make a muslin. Um, you just have to sew them up. So I am going to um, really quickly sew my straps down. And for these, I am just going to sew a, a really good zigzag and then um, cut the raw edge off because... I'm next gonna put on an old bra underneath this and see if we can, um, I'll show you that trick, um, to see if I can get it fitted and fixed, um, at least to where it's a little bit more wearable because this is pretty big right here. So um, anyway, okay. So let me just real quickly zigzag these down and I've decided that I really like the strap placement right over that bust seam. That seems to fit me really well. Um, so yeah, let me do that and then I will show you the bra trick. So look at the difference, um, putting an old bra. Obviously the old bra is hanging out, that's fine. Um, this actually works much better if you have someone helping you, <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, so I have pinned it here where the bra kind of comes out um, on both sides. And I've pinned it at the side seam of the front. You can see the pin there. Okay, so now I'm going to take the swimsuit off and we are going to sew the bra in those places and then cut it off where we don't need it. And I don't think I'm gonna to need to sew. Sometimes you might need to hand tack a little bit. You can see a little bit of the bra through that hole there, but I'm not as worried about that. Um, okay, so now I'm going to take it all off and we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and um, I think make it at least pretty much wearable. It will not, I will be cutting this all off so that won't be there any longer. It will definitely make it look better. Um, I mean, this would definitely be a wearable muslin. I would, it's a pretty high cut leg. 
I may even lower the leg just a wee bit um, and flanagle the cup somehow because <laughs> it's too big. Um, it's too big, but the cup does not is not long enough. It doesn't fit me well enough. So there's definitely some tweaks that I could make um, to this pattern, but for now. Okay, let's take it off and go. Okay, so now it's off my body. I wanna show you a little bit better. So I've pinned it here. So basically I'm going to zigzag and try and follow the top stitching that's there anyway, but zigzag right there. Um, this all stay tucked away once it was on my body, so I'm not worried about that. I'll zigzag here, which is where that is, and then I'm actually going to straight stitch. I do want to make sure I'm not going to be hitting any, um, there's boning in there. I don't want to hit the boning, so I'll make sure and sew from this side, um, and I will pin that in. But I'm going to just stitch in the ditch, basically, um, at that seam to sew this uh, bra to the side seam. So let's go to the machine and do that. All right. So we're, the goal here is to sew, and I'm still on my three-step zigzag, but to sew, whoo, sorry, to knock you over. Let me pan out a little. There we go. To sew as close to that, um, previous top stitching as I can. Get that pin out of the way. Okay, next I'm going to do it on this other side. You also wanna be very careful that you're not accidentally catching things you don't wanna catch. <laughs> Just like with anything. But you've got a lot of stuff that's already sewn into place here. Okay, so that is all sewn in there. And now what we are going to do, okay, before we cut anything, now I'm going to pin right along that seam line. Now you do want to be careful here that you're not hitting any of the boning of the bra or, um, yeah, really just the boning. It also might help to turn things inside out here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and cut this off just so we can get some of this out of here. So now once you have sewn your this part of the swimsuit in, you can cut this part off. So you just want to be very careful. I want it to be below that edge. I don't want to accidentally cut the actual swimsuit. So 
So there you go. So from the front, you can't see it. This isn't the prettiest finish to put the bra in, but I really feel like it gives you so much support that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm sacrificing looks for the support. I got off my actual suit there, so we're gonna clip some of those stitches. Okay, so once again, from the front, when it's on my body, you totally can't see that. All right. So now we're just going to come over here. And I'm just spinning right there in the ditch of the seam line. And now I'm going to switch it to a straight stitch. I'm gonna lengthen it to like a three and a half because it is knit. And I am gonna sew from the right side. Hold on. I have a this bra has not only, there's a small section between the underwire. All right, so here's what we have. So I've zigzagged up here at the top and then cut off basically the straps of the bra there. And then I sew, got a loose strand there. Then I have sewn it into the side seam there and then cut off the back part of the bra there. So now we have a little bit of um, support where we didn't have it before that does help with the fit of this suit. Okay, so now we're finished with the suit. It's completely sewn. Um, I hope you guys found some of these tips and tricks helpful. I am going to cut now to um, me saying goodbye. I will show you footage of me actually in the suits, you know, once it's all finished and styled and stuff at the very, very end. Um, but I'm going to cut to me now um, talking about the pattern and my thoughts and all that stuff. Okay. Okay, so there we have it. There is our B6358 swimsuit. I just wanted to talk a little bit about this pattern. Um, number one, I don't know that I gave it a really fair try because I did accidentally put the little interior bra that's in the swimsuit in between the lining and outer swimsuit as opposed to on the inside of the lining where it's supposed to be. However, that being said, it would not have been enough support for my chest um, just because I am busty, which is not... I mean, any swimsuit with that kind of thing or top, that's a common issue for me, which is, you know, my own body. Um, I do think that I would have, you know, I cut the size that fit my bust on the top, knowing that it might be a little too big, and it is. Um, I could definitely work with it a little bit and probably, oh, if nothing, just take in the back strap, um, you know, wear it a little bit and just kind of decide what I want to do because it's just a little bit big under my arms. I think that the bra built in or that I sewed in does definitely help. Um, with the support of the bathing suit. Um, it's a common issue that I have though with one pieces. If, I, if it doesn't have cup sizes that it comes and I just have a really hard time fitting it to my chest because my chest is so much larger than the rest of my measurements. Um, you know, I would fit into almost a straight size if it weren't for my boobs. <laughs> but I have them, so well, what are you gonna do? Um, that being said, this is a fantastic swimsuit. Um, Liesl, who is the pattern designer behind the Lisette patterns, um, as well as Liesl & Co, um, did a great job, and I love all the details that she did put into this one um, and made it for a very, um, you know, it's not a complicated sew. Like, I, I find this to be a very uh, doable swimsuit pattern. I, you know, I've sewn quite a few swimsuit, swimsuits, but um, yeah, I was very impressed with the instructions on this. I think that if you do normally fall within a straight size, or even if you're just a little bit bigger in the chest, I think this pattern is going to be absolutely wonderful and fit like a dream. Um, it's just um, my boobs. They always cause an issue. 
That being said, I don't, I do like this and I think it will get worn. Um, it's, it's a very cute suit. And I think I mentioned before the difficulty with swimsuits is that you can't really do a muslin for them. You just have to go ahead and make the entire suit because so much plays into the fit of a swimsuit um, and you almost have to have it completed in order to, to test that to, um, you know, for its actual truth. <laughs> um, same thing with underwear and bras. Um... I don't know that I would make it again, only because I have other swimsuits that do have cup sizes that do fit me a little bit better. But again, I'm really pleased. I will wear it. I think it is a very cute swimsuit. And yeah, definitely give this a go if you um, are more of a standard size. Because um, I think that built-in bra will be just enough and just perfect for um, someone with an average size bust. So anyway... That's all I wanted to say about the pattern. I am now going to, I'm washing myself out, there we go. <laughs> I'm now going to um, pan and show you what it looks like completely finished on. Um, put on some, a little bit of a heel, <laughs> elongate my leg a little bit. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this and um, yeah, that was it for this sew along. Next week we've got our, I'm gonna do a little um, tutorial on how to do elastic shearing. Um, which is what I used for my raspberry dress recently. And then I'm also going to, um, I'll see, after that, I'm going to be doing, I can't remember the number, this Butterick pattern, um, which I'm actually going to be lining the bodice on that. It does have a front pa placket, but I just like finished, my bodice is finished off with a lining, and so I'm just going to kind of show you how I do that, um, which might be a little bit different um, because it is a dress with a placket, and this is a cup size pattern, which is obviously, as you know, one of my fav favorite types to sew. Um, I feel like I just can get a better fit on myself with those. So that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. Leave any questions you have down below in the comments, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Bye!